Greetings everyone. Grab some popcorn. We're going to learn about the mole. How to use molar mass, Avogadro's number, and the chemist carton known as the mole and do some different types of problems. So I'm going to go through a couple of the different types of problems that you're going to encounter and how you should approach them. First off, we need to start with identifying kind of the difference between some of these terms. So the mole is a bundle that chemists use very conveniently. That bundle gives us a way to count atoms. So if we say what is one mole, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of our representative particles, okay, the number of things. And then the mole also, that bundle, if I were to somehow take that bundle of atoms together and throw them on a balance, the mass in grams of that bundle would be equal to the average atomic mass of the atoms, or whatever constitutes the compound, that's on the periodic table. So that number of grams per mole is actually the average atomic mass on the periodic table. And we can use the molar mass to go from grams to moles, and we can use Avogadro's number to go from moles to representative particles. So I'm going to go through a couple examples using these different conversion factors and how to approach these types of problems. So let's start with, first one we're going to look at is going from, um, first off we need to find the molar mass before we can even use molar mass. So to find the molar mass, this is remember the mass of one mole of a substance. So this substance here is a formula unit. I have metals and non-metals, this is actually an ionic compound. What I need to do is I need to count up um, how many of each element I have. So I'm going to look at the subscripts, and the subscripts tell me how many of what's directly before them. So I have two atoms of Hg in this formula unit. And I look at this two over here behind the OH. And this two actually hits everything within the parentheses. So I have two oxygen and two hydrogen. So this, this big piece here, what I'm counting, what I'm looking at, uh, this formula unit has two atoms of HG, two atoms of O, and two atoms of H. So what I need to do is I need to add up their respective average atomic masses to find the mass of a whole one of these. Okay, a whole one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do two times the average atomic mass of mercury. I look it up on the periodic table and I see a value of two point, uh, 200.59. Uh, so I'm going to round that to 200. 0.59 rounds up. I'm just going to do one decimal place. So 0.6. 200.6. Now I'm going to add that, the product, uh, the answer to that product, to 2 times the average atomic mass of oxygen. So I look at it on the periodic table. It says 15.9994. I'm going to round to one decimal place. Uh, it becomes 16.0. And I also have to add the 2 hydrogen, 2 times. Hydrogen rounds to 1.0 when I round it to one decimal places. So if I punch all this into my calculator and add them together, I'm going to get a, a total mass of 419.2. I'm going to watch my sig figs. The least precise decimal place um, for all of these is the, uh, the tenths place. So that first decimal place, remember, two is an exact number. So we're not going to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and look at this here. This number stands for the mass in grams um, of my substance. This is mercury 1 hydroxide. And that's going to be the number of grams in grams per mole. Number of grams per mole. Now you may see this written 419.2 grams of Hg2OH2 per one mole of that substance. Uh, and then that's another way you may see it written if we're using it as a conversion factor. And I can flip that around. So this molar mass is a conversion factor. It is really an equivalent statement. One mole of that substance, one bundle of those atoms, one mole, that's my bundle, it has a mass of that, that amount of grams, 419 grams. So this is how we find the molar mass. And you're, you can do this for any compound that you can imagine. Okay, so we're going to use the molar mass now. So 
first way to do this is we're going to, if we're given moles and we want to go to the mass. So if I think about that, um, Michael Kalis to the Notre Dame office. Michael Kalis to the office. Okay, so if I want to go from moles to mass, um, I'm going to take my starting quantity, 3.50 moles of HgOH2. I'm going to draw an X in a conversion bubble. To go from moles to mass, I know you have this in your notes. If you look at that little conversion chart, we have to go, whenever we're going away from the mole, we end up multiplying. And my converter from moles to mass is my molar mass. So I'm going to end up multiplying by that converter, the molar mass. We just found it. It was 419.2 grams for every one mole. And notice, I'm not going to write all out, or write out Hg2OH2, but we're talking about the same thing. This molar mass, 419.2, is only for this compound here. Different compounds have different molar masses. That number changes. Okay, so watch out for that. So I multiply. My moles cancel. I multiply 3.5 times 419.2. Um, this number here, 419.2, we're just going to... Uh, that's four sig figs, and I have my measured value here, 3.5. So we're going to round to three, fig sigs, three sig figs. Uh, I punch in my calculator, I get 1467.2. I'm going to round to uh, 1470 grams. I'm going to round to three sig figs, 1470 grams of Hg2OH2. So we can use this moles to mass, we can use the molar mass and we can end up multiplying by our converter. If you use dimensional analysis with these conversion factors, it's usually helpful, to me at least, because the units are canceling and you know you're doing it the right way, uh, and that will never serve you wrong. All right, let's look at the next example. Uh, the next example is going the opposite. We're going to start with mass, and we're going to go back to moles. Whenever we're returning to moles, we end up dividing, and my conversion between mass and moles is, of course, molar mass. So I'm going to go ahead and take my starting quantity. I'm going to draw a conversion bubble. I'm going to use molar mass is how I go from mass to moles. I need grams to cancel. I need to get to moles. That number of grams off the periodic table is always per one mole. Okay, if you're always putting a one next to the mole, it's good practice because the quantities and conversions we're dealing with have a one there. So I write out 419.2 grams. Uh, for one mole, grams cancel, and we're left with dividing by. So I divide that out, 10.5 divided by 419. I'm going to go ahead and punch this in, 10.5 divided by 419.2. And I'm going to get an answer of 0 0.250, round it to three fig six figs, 0 0.250 moles of Hg2OH2. So we can use the same conversion factor, molar mass, we just flip it upside down, we end up dividing instead of multiplying. And we can get our final answer. Three sig figs, three sig figs. All right, another one I'd like to show you is an example of going from moles to representative particles. Um, so whenever we want to go from moles and we're talking about how many things, how many particles do we have, we always use the chemist carton the chemist bundle known as Avogadro's number. So when I'm going away from the mole, I'm going to be multiplying by, and I'll just put Avogadro's number. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and need to use that. So I take my starting quantity, 3.5 moles, to RPs, representative particles. Now it doesn't really matter what my uh, moles of what, it really doesn't matter. A mole is a bundle, and I'm always going to have the same number of particles. So 3.5 moles times we're going to use Avogadro's number. In every mole, the units be my guide, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things, representative particles. So if my representative particle is that formula unit of mercury 1 hydroxide from the last problem, my representative particle is going to be um, a formula unit. If it's just an element, it's going to be an atom. So if I punch that in, I'm going to get a gigantic number. Uh, 2.11 times 10 to the 24th representative particles. 
and you would want to specify what kind of representative particle. Is it an atom? Is it a formula unit? Is it a molecule? For our last example, it would be a formula unit. So that's one way we can do that. Now, if you wanted to go from representative particles back to moles, you, of course, would be dividing by Avogadro's number, and your units and, and everything would be a little different. Okay, we'd flip that converter around. That's going to be the basics. Um, this should get you through uh, this, this first homework, Mole Fun, and I hope that this was helpful. You guys have a good night.